Hey ladies and gents and welcome to the Controlled Interest Gamecast episode 149.1 or .5, however you look at it. Um, as always, I'm joined by Jordan. Greetings, Jared, and welcome to issue 149.1 of the <laughs> Controlled Interest comic series. So, Dom's not joining us this week, and that's actually the big reason why it's on episode 150. You're probably listening to this and wondering... 149.1, 149.5. What does that mean? Well, we had some stuff planned for episode 150. Obviously, it's a, it's a really cool, neat um, marker to me in terms of podcasting. Unfortunately, at the last second, Dom wasn't able to join us. We had to pull an audible. So instead of our traditional podcast, where we talk about what we've been playing, covering news and topics and all that stuff, we're gonna kind of just do a conversational um, kind of episode between me and Jordan. I have some questions for him regarding upcoming video game releases or things that could possibly happen in the future and we're just going to have a conversation for probably around 40 45 minutes ish won't be as long as a normal podcast more than likely who knows jordan and i have a tendency to go on about things so we might make it longer than that we'll see um but yeah we'll be back to the normal show next week episode 150 with all three of us hopefully and yeah so let's hop into it so the first thing i want to talk about jordan is recently in the last couple of years, we saw the release of, um, obviously, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that came out on the Switch, got ported over. And then, in the last couple of weeks, we saw Crash Team Racing, obviously, come oh. out, right? The brand new um, remake. remake of the beloved series. What I want to know from you, in this world where we're seeing kart racers sell pretty well, what would you want most out of a Jack X... Uh, oh, combat oh, racing. Oh, oh, oh. In terms of like, do you want it to, do you want it to be like wholly authentic to the original? What kind of aspects of the game do you want them to maybe tweak or modernize for the current audience? And uh, maybe additional characters you would love to see in it. Just some of your thoughts on. I know I'm hitting you the spur of the moment with this question, but you no, know, I with these it. recent car racers, I just want to know your ideas of what a Jack X combat racing remake in today's gaming industry could look like so you're talking about getting the crash treatment where they do exactly it's still the same game they're just remaking it exactly so first of all i just want to say that i am so ecstatic that we are getting a revival of kart racers i would really like to see diddy kong racing come back as well um who knows if that'll happen but yeah i'm i'm absolutely loving this and uh i'm also thinking that i'll probably be playing uh, Sonic Team Racing on my Switch at some point, just because even if it's not as good as Mario Kart, it's still going to be solid, and I, for whatever reason, just can't get enough uh, kart racers and arcade racing, so um, there's that, but uh, if, wow, Jared, if we got a remake of the greatest game of all time, what would that look like? What would I want that to look like? Oof. Um... Well, first of all, there is some context here because if that were to happen, Jared, that would be the representation in, in the similar way that, that Crash is. Uh, that would be the high-definition representation, the modern representation of these characters, right? Like, those games have kind of gone away. And so, like when Crash uh, came into Spyro... Uh, Skylanders, and then uh, subsequently into his um, his trilogy remake, um, they had to kind of like update the look, and people were kind of excited to see that um, variation. So, I honestly wish that we were getting a Jack Four, but since we aren't, it would be really cool to see what Jack himself and, of course, Daxter look like in uh, an HD scenario, uh, in HD environments with uh, HD assets, obviously. Um, so that's really uh, kind of the thing that piques my interest most, which obviously doesn't have much to do with the game. It's just kind of the situation that the franchise is in. Um, but that would be big for me. And then um, the cool thing about uh, Jack X is that it is not just... Um, rolling around tracks you know when it says combat racing there's like different um events i guess you could call them that uh are really focused on combat 
and so I would love to see just like more events and then um, um, obviously diving deep on the combat and um, of course you know Jared I would like to see him just go wild with it um, and see kind of how creative they could get as far as um, maybe goofier modes um, I, don't, I don't know how much you would add to this since it's a remake but if they were willing to add any content I'd like to see them go quite goofy with it um, even though this is technically a canon entry in the Jack franchise um, it's still like I, I'm not going to lie Jack X Combat Racing like it's it's supposed to sound like a cool PS2 game, you know, so it's like they could have a little fun with the whole like tough guy thing because there's some funny lines in there, man. So, um, yeah, I think the initial excitement for me would just come from seeing that, uh, what the new uh, touches to the art style and, and the high definition graphics would look like, which I know is very exciting for a lot of Crash fans. So, yeah. It's... It's interesting because I do think there's a possible like there's a there's a universe where uh, Sony has their own kart racer on their platform for like all of their characters, right? So it's like the Crash characters, yeah. the Sly characters, Jack and Daxter, PlayStation All Stars karting. Exactly. Though I I think it'd be pretty awkward to see like Nathan Drake or like Ali in a in, in a cart next to the yeah. Like these cartoon I don't know characters. if you would do like a. Uh... I guess you wouldn't want to do a cartoon version because you want to have them all in there, you know, in the kind of like Smash Bros. Like, it's not a cartoon version of Snake. Like, Snake looks like a real man next to Mario, who looks like a cartoon boy. Yeah. Man thing. And, <laughs> like, with, uh, with Jack and Daxter, I think you have plenty of Naughty Dog representation that you might not even right. need the, them. Because you can also have, like, uh, what's her name from Horizon Zero Dawn? She is, like, cartoony enough, I think, that she could fit decently well. Aloy. Yeah. Especially with her over-the-top, like, obviously, uh, like, prehistoric-inspired design with her headdress right. and everything. Um, but with Jack X Combat Racing, we've seen with uh, Crash Team Racing that they... There was multiple games in the series, so they kind of packaged all of the maps into this one game. Uh, and there was some additional characters that were added. And... the one of the things that I've seen that isn't necessarily a complaint, but it is a difference in the overall gameplay, is that because the graphics were so limited back then, that the readability of the, a lot of the levels is easier on the eyes in the yeah. older tracks because there's a lot, uh, a lot more harder lines, right? Um, a lot more poly, or actually less polygons, so um, a lot easier structural readability in terms of knowing where the the lane lies, where you're driving. Do you think that might be something that could cause issues with Jack X Combat Racing, where yeah. the the remake could muddle up the overall design of the levels and make it harder for people? Absolutely. I think that that was something I was actually thinking about. Watching footage of uh, the Easy Allies E3 impressions on Crash Racing, it was like... I think they were the levels were looking a little busy. Uh, to me a little little chaotic um, as far as their design choices and how many items they chose to put on screen at any one time so I think that that could be the case where um, it's almost like HD to the max and you kind of don't necessarily want that you just want a crisp and clean update of what was already nice what was already there yeah but the, the tough thing there though is I think these developers and publishers want to make sure that they can sell this game at full price to people. And I, th I think the worry is if you stick to more simplistic design, not, not that somebody like you would mind it, but I think the general audience who's never been familiar with this title are going to grab it or see gameplay. If they see these more barren levels, they're going to feel sure. that it's a mark on quality, which it isn't, you know? Yeah. So I think there's some worry there of, like, the reason there is so much detail and, like, you, to your point, sometimes too much is because they want to sell it on quality. And yeah. that's the tough part is these games can be quality and worth the price of admission without the busy design, but to the yeah. untrained eye, they kind of need to sell it to them that way, which is unfortunate. And so. 
it's about finding a happy medium, you know. I think yeah. it's worth it to add things to the level. You're not necessarily changing things by adding extra bushes on the side of the road, on the side of the track. Um, so there's, like I said, a happy medium where you're not making it too busy and almost uh, uh, aesthetically unpleasing, um, but you're still beefing it up a bit from the maybe barren environments that you might see on a ps2 game yeah it's it's gonna be interesting too in terms of car racers because with the port of uh mario kart 8 deluxe we assume that there's gonna be a brand new mario kart on the switch because we haven't gotten a new one for this platform as a port but some people are worried that because of the port that they we might not see it it's yeah. it's tough there because we don't know how long the switch is going to go for revisions the mini the pro all that stuff um yeah, I just you know, maybe. Go I'm ahead. sure they're out there, Jared. I'm sure the kart racers are out there, but it's honestly a, a it's a genre that you could see indie creators kind of snatching up and saying, "To me, you don't necessarily need the licensed characters in there. If you're just making an ultra solid kart racer where it has, you know, you can still customize carts and." Um, you know, customize your racer or whatever it may be. Um, but if it's just like really, really solid kart racing with cool levels, good music, I don't necessarily think that you have to have the power of Nintendo pushing out Mario Kart with their IP. So I'm surprised that you haven't seen more of these, uh, you know, maybe not, maybe a little bit smaller scale than something like Mario Kart um, or Little Big Planet Karting, for example, the AAA bastard that it was um uh, but uh yeah i'm just surprised you don't see that kind of popping up in the indie space a little bit more and the funny thing is so team sonic racing actually drew better critical reception than people anticipated because uh, yeah. it's sonic obviously um and the nickelodeon car racer that recently came out wasn't great but it wasn't like terrible you know like it wasn't yeah. like it was it was passable is what from what I heard from some people. Yeah, like there's Cartoon Network kart racers. Why are kart racers so big in licensed situations? I just or think, IP situations, you know. I just think that like racing games in general are, are a niche genre, so for publishers to want yeah. to take a risk on it, they're like, Well, in order to get our money back, at the very least we need to have some licensing deals. So right. The crazy thing is we haven't. I don't think we've seen a like a, you know how like Brawlhalla isn't super uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, but it's carved out its own niche as a free to play Super right. Smash Brothers, right? And they do have licensed characters pop in, like we recently saw the addition of uh, Jake Finn and Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time. I don't is Shovel think Shovel Knight in that game. Uh, I think Shovel Knight's in that game, and so is uh, Rayman, and obviously a lot of the other Ubisoft characters. Um, I don't think we've seen a kart racer attempt that. It'd be interesting to see a yeah. high quality, you know, ind independent kart racer, like you were saying, come out and be free to play. And then it doesn't rely necessarily on the licenses, but sometimes they do deals with people and you see characters added, but it's based purely on like an original IP. And I think there is, there, I think there is an audience for that. Especially if you consider all of the people on Xbox and PlayStation who I guess mostly I'm looking at the Xbox audience because PlayStation is closely tied to Crash more so than Xbox is, and yeah. then Nintendo has Mario Kart. Xbox doesn't really have that. Obviously, we have Crash, but, I mean, I <coughs> love Crash, but I know I'm in the minority in terms of people who are Xbox owners that also have ties to Crash Bandicoot, right? So I think a free-to-play car racer could do pretty well, not only on Xbox, but PC and PlayStation 4 as well. It's, it's going to yeah. be interesting to see if somebody maybe attempts that in the next generation and they see that, like, oh, Crash did well, Mario Kart 8 did well, Team Sonic Racing did okay. <coughs> Let's try our hand at it and see what happens. Because there are talented studios out there that are trying to make these polished, like, racing games with actual cars. And I think that's even a harder market to get into than kart racers. I think if they oh, took yeah. their focus and their energy and their interest in making a racing game, but maybe shot for a more arcadey kart racer, they could see possibly more success than going after, you know, the Forzas and Gran Turismos and all that. So, now, who knows? 
it's not necessarily a kart racer, but I would think it, you could consider it an arcade uh, racer. The fuck, I'm trying to remember the name. The Switch game that's that's like a rhythm arcade racer with kind of like Persona vibes to the art aesthetic. It was on um. a uh, Nintendo Direct. Um, something Hearts. Sayonara Wild Hearts? There you go. Sayonara Wild Hearts. Um, that could be something, man. It's looking like it could possibly scratch an itch for me. Um, the second topic isn't going to be too long, and then the third topic is something I really want to talk about. So, the second okay. topic I want to hop into, obviously me and you are really excited for Pokemon Sword and Shield. You're getting Shield, I'm getting Sword, or at least that's where it stands yeah. at the moment. Um, so wait, I, wait, wait, that's, um, uh, uh, Jared Sword, Jordan Shield. Right? Yeah, Jared Sword, Jordan Shield. Um, I know you were kind of hard set on your starter, um... Are you still going Square Bunny? Yeah, and you know what's crazy, Jared? The more I think about it, there's something to the fact of, like, I was thinking, even more than just starters, I am attracted to fire Pokemon. Straight up. That's like, cool. Like, Arcanine, and, uh, you know, Ponyta, and Rapidash, like, the uh, fire legendaries I love, Entei, of course, um... So there's something to be said there. I mean, there's other types of Pokemon uh, that I definitely gravitate to, but I've noticed um, I am very attracted to fire Pokemon in general. I think we talked, um, I think it was the last episode, about like me, like certain people are into different types of looking Pokemon. Like I'm all about getting cool Pokemon. Yeah. Pokemon that I think look cool. Um, just because that's how I started uh, enjoying Pokemon in the first place, so I think that is kind of similar. Fire, uh, a lot of the fire Pokemon look very cool, too. So the interesting thing growing up is my best friend is a fire starter guy, fire Pokemon guy in general. Fire right? starter! So growing up, he would always pick the fire starter, and then I would usually choose between the water or grass starter, depending on which one I liked more. So right. Gen 1, I went uh, Bulbasaur, and... Uh, because I liked Bulbasaur more than Squirtle, though I like Blastoise more than Venusaur. Um, and I like yeah, Ivysaur see, more that's than... See, that's another thing, too. You gotta, you gotta think about the the starter that you're picking in the moment, but also possible if you don't know them, or the evolutions, you know, looking at them. Yeah. So the cool thing, like, the thing that sucks with Bulbasaur is that Bulbasaur is a really great design, Ivysaur is a really great design... Venusaur is like a very ugly design. It's easily the most ugly right. out of the three original starters, which sucks. Yeah. But it is. It's hideous. With yeah. with uh, Charizard and Squirtle, they have the ugliest middle evolutions. Like War Turtle and Charmeleon, I don't think are are nearly as cool looking Dude, as Charmander. I kind of like War Turtle's fucking fins on his head. The kind of looks like Flash. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I like <laughs> yeah. that shit. Um, those are cool, but I'm just saying in terms of, like, comparing those to Squirtle, Charmander, Charizard, Blastoise, like, those are easily the worst level of their evolutions, I think. Oh, my God, my Jared. I know, maybe not the very next one, but I know what one of the new Pokemon gimmicks is going to be. What is it? In the coming generation. Branching evolutions. So, like... Think if you had, instead of Blastoise, maybe you have an evolution of War Turtle that like looks more like War Turtle and has the fins on his head and doesn't have the guns like Blastoise does, and like you could like split split them off into trees, similar to like Mega Mega Evolutions, things like that. Yeah, man. So the the crazy thing is these games are coming out in November, and we only know I think like eight or nine of the Pokemon in the game, the new ones. Oh, I know, and, and I, I haven't been real impressed. I gotta say. Um, I've liked most of them except for the cotton grass Pokemon because it's like we have one of those almost every generation. Uh, the one yeah, that they showed the evolution for, it's like, eh, it's one other one. The the ones that they've showed are just like super basic stuff. It's like they're really trying to keep you surprised because you can tell these are just like the basic Pokemon that are like fodder. For the first 10 hours while you're running through the little towns before you get to the real big stuff, right? 
Well, like, I think the imp-looking guy is probably, like, the Radita type for this region. So we don't know uh -huh. his evolution. I, I guarantee that one's probably the initial evolution. The Electric Corgi probably fits into the, um, like, the common dogs we see almost in every evolution, right. uh, every generation. Corviknight is a fine evolution, and I think he's actually going to be pretty powerful. I think he's still dark, which is a pretty good combination. Is that the bird... Yeah, the big black bird, uh, the big crow. Yeah. Um, I think that one has one of the cooler designs. Um, sure. Guard Chomper, not Guard Chomp, that's a different Pokemon. The four-legged one. The turtle, what's his name? Something Bite. Nar Chomp? Bite? Guard Chomp? No, Guard Chomp is the shark from a previous generation. No, I said Nar. It's something like that. Well, it's like, I don't fucking uh, know. Man. I don't fucking know. Sword, Shield, Turtle, Pokemon. Let's see. I can't remember his name. It is... What the heck is it? Um, I'm interested to see if he's the final evolution or if he's, like, the middle evolution or the beginning evolution. I'm not I'm not sure yet. We don't know. Yeah. Man, so, I don't think it was a bad idea for them to have uh, gone in the second generation and done... Um, I don't even know what term you would use, but the evolutions that were prior to the Pokemon that we knew of. Uh, baby right? evolutions. Like Pichu. Baby yeah. evolutions. Okay. So, um, I think it'd be cool to have more stuff like that, but maybe not even, like, baby versions of whatever Pokemon, but just, uh, you know, kind of like a earlier along in the line. Uh, uh, Dreadnought version. was his name, by the way. Um, and so one of the things is that there's actually going to be region specific evolutions to Gen 1 Pokemon like there was in Sun and Moon and one of the rumored ones is an evolution of Farfetch'd or sorry not an evolution but a version of him like a region specific variant so I've, I'm pretty interested to see what that looks like because Farfetch'd is one of the Gen 1 Pokemon that never seen a baby evolution or an evolution in a following generation, right? Like even right. Magmar, Magmar, Electabuzz, both got baby evolutions and they got uh, following evolutions. Magmar got Magmortar and Electabuzz got, I can't remember Electabuzz's next evolution. Um, but like the, they're one of those single evolution Pokemon from Gen 1 that actually got to post that. Um, yeah. So you're going score bunny. I'm still not sure between Sobble and uh, what's his name, Grookey. I want to see final evolutions before I choose. But it's gonna yeah, be they haven't been leaked officially. Like real leaks haven't come out. I know that's kind of a weird term. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the last thing before we close out that I want to talk about is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and the specific topic I want to talk to you about is. In the trailers at E3 and post E3, we saw Saw Gerrera, right, from obviously Rogue yeah, One pop yeah. up, and it was a really cool cameo. He's in Rebels, too. Exactly, yeah. Um, I want to talk to you about what characters you want to see make a cameo and what characters oh. you hope don't make a cameo. Um, and this is tough because there's characters that, like Darth Vader, for instance, would it be cool if we see him in some aspect during the events of this game? Yes. But because he is the he is the NBA NFL logo of Star Wars, like he is the he is Star Wars, right? It's like uh, it do, I hope I don't want it to feel like it's an over reliance on Darth Vader. You know what I mean? Like oh, we need a Darth Vader cameo in almost everything we do. Um, yeah. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be something more mysterious or intimidating, something that ha kind of has a reason to be in the game. Um, yeah. Some of the suggestions people have thrown out is they want to see Ahsoka. Um, who was... Fuck yes, Jared. I want to see Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah, That's uh, my favorite fucking character. Of course I want to see her. Obviously, she was the secret Padawan of uh, Anakin Skywalker. Um, yes, in the Clone Wars. And then she's actually very sparingly, unfortunately, used in uh, Star Wars Rebels. But very cool. And, you know, the whole journey in Jedi Fallen Order is Cal Kestis coming to terms with the fact that he's a Jedi. And I don't think it's necessarily learning his powers. It's like getting reacclimated to them because he was obviously getting in tune with those before uh, Order 66 happened. 
Um, right. So it's just him getting in touch back with his his force powers and all that, and it'd be cool to run into other Jedi because we know he has a master. Um, it's the 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 black woman actress who is from Mad TV and also Wolfenstein. I don't remember her character's name in Jedi Fallen Order, but she's his master. Um, so and Saw Gerrera has a line in the trailer too where he talks about. The, the Jedi have returned or the Jedi are here in a major way or something. So I'm assuming we're going to see multiple different Jedi. I hope we see some new Jedi or maybe Sith that yeah, yeah, yeah. are new to this game. Because obviously we know about the Second Sisters and all of that and the Inquisitor. But I want some, some new Jedi, some new Sith. And then with, with other characters, it's tough because it's a timeline that I think gets focused on a lot in most of Star Wars entertainment, right, between Episode 3 and 4, or at least it seems oh, like yeah. it's been that way. Um, do you think maybe oh, yeah. we'll see some tie-ins to, like, The Mandalorian? And also, like, since you haven't really talked about it, what characters outside of Ahsoka do you want to see featured? Well, Ahsoka is my number one choice. I'm glad you said that. Uh, she's my favorite character in all of Star Wars. And... Um, Another person that I think that we could see and that I would love to see is uh, Soka's pal Kanan from uh, Star Wars Rebels, who is very similar uh, in nature to Cal. He, Cal, when they <clears throat> kind of introduced the character, reminded me a lot of his story because Kanan uh, was, it seems like, basically the same age, maybe a couple years younger, like 12, when this all went down. And um, Order 66. And so he um, was. had a lot to learn to really actually become a Jedi. And it seems like Cal may be a little bit further down the line, a little more experienced. But clearly, these guys, they're not Jedi Knights. They're not, um, you know, they're not in a place to where they could become a master, a Jedi master on their own. They probably still need a lot of guidance. And so, yeah, like you said, seeing possible other Jedi characters that could lend a hand to that, especially Ahsoka, would be awesome. Um, I'll, of course, give another shout out to a, my other favorite character from Star Wars, which is Asajj Ventress, um, who bounces back and forth between the dark and the light side, but is... Um, also around during this time period because she's from the Clone Wars series. Um, so she's... Do you know who I'm talking about, Jared? Not familiar, no. She's the dual-wielding, bald uh, Sith from uh, the Clone Wars and also Gindy Tartakovsky's Clone Wars is actually where she was created. She was created for that series. Do you remember that shit? You watch that? I haven't seen Clone Wars, no. Okay. You should definitely watch the Clone Wars micro-series by Gindy Tarkovsky. That introduces her as uh, Dooku's apprentice, and she's fucking cool as shit. She's like a Sith witch. And, um... Yeah, definitely one of my favorite characters, so I would love to see her. Um, I feel like the Inquisitors are uh, very reminiscent of her. Um, that's where the second sister comes into play. She's uh, one of the Inquisitors. So, um, as far as like non-force wielders, I would say uh, at this time in the timeline, um, you know, I'm not one to be like wanting to see like the main characters. That's why I've, the ones I mention are you know from expanded universe stuff. Um, so, I think it'd be cool to see, throw somebody out there, let me think. I, I don't have know, one. maybe you could, okay, go ahead. I want to see, uh, Cal come across Tura Imwe, for obvious, also from Rogue One. Okay, Rogue One, yeah, Rogue One character would be good, that'd be perfect. Just because, like, obviously Timing. he sees the Force, uh as a religion right and he's like very devout yeah. to it and i think that'd be an interesting um interaction for cal of him seeing that some people treat this more as like oh like superpowers or a special ability or whatever or even just a gift it's like no this is something more than that and i think that could be a really mm -hmm. cool 
interaction between the two. Um, mm. There's people want Thrawn. Um, to show yeah, up. that's what I'm thinking. Is like, what if? I mean, Thrawn's already in this position, but what if they like bring back, do what they did with Thrawn on Rebels and bring back uh, an expanded universe character uh, that's you know currently just Legends, but this makes them canon. Um, yeah. That would be really fucking cool, dude. That'd be like, as far as uh, like Keanu Reeves level shit of like him being in cyberpunk for Star Wars people, that would be on that level, I think. How do you feel about Darth Maul possibly making a cameo? Yeah, he's. Uh, I was trying to personally just think of non force wielders because I want you know. Like, yeah. I just don't want to like uh, pigeonhole myself, I guess, but. Um, Man, spoilers for Rogue One. He pops up in that. It's been a couple of years since that came out. Solo. Or a year or so since that came out. Solo, not Rogue One. Uh, he pops up in Solo after... Um, or... So it's like after he's been rebuilt in Clone Wars. And um, this would be around the time of Rebels. When he's um, doing his whole uh, Tony Soprano shit, you know. He's uh, kind of a gangster mob type. Mob boss. <laughs> a mob boss. He's pretty cool, yeah. So, um, I don't know if they're doing so- a sequel to Solo. What? Because he's kind of a tease at the end, and it'd be interesting to see him live action. But are you kidding me? In a Jedi video game? Hell yeah, I want to see Maul. And this, I, I would have to know exactly when this game happens, you know? But um, I guess he would be. Clone Wars is between two and three, so he would be. He would be done with his spider days, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so he would have actual legs again. So yeah, I think that would be really fucking dope because. Still an underutilized character, even with his appearances in uh, Clone Wars and. Rebels and Rogue One and comics, it's like we need to get him. You should be seeing Maul more often than you do. How old is Maz Kanata in Episode Seven? Could she have been alive, mm. or is that too too? She's pretty fucking old. Yeah. Um, and dude, that's not that long. That's like less than fifty years, probably from Episode Three to Episode Seven. I'm just not sure how old she is, you know? So that's a tough yeah. thing. Obviously and we don't, she's her like an alien, too. so she could be <laughs> like centuries old for all we fucking know. Exactly. The, the thing with it is like, I don't... With Star Wars, especially like this video game, I want to see... I want to be introduced to a lot of new characters, right? New Jedi, new Sith, new right. non-Force people. Um, yeah. Because I want it to feel like its own thing, but I also want to pay tribute to all the other Star Wars stuff we've come to love. I just want it to meet in the middle somewhere i don't want it to yeah. feel like an advertisement for everything else star wars where it's like sure. constantly running like if, into all um, of these cameos if janina gavanka came through as her battlefront 2 character and you're just like god damn it ea fucking well, god damn it that honestly i think that kind of cameo would make more sense than like darth maul but she would be like a little kid right or no she wouldn't even when does battlefront oh, yeah, 2's that's campaign true. take place Battlefront 2 would be after the Death Star explodes. So. The first Death Star explodes. So that would be 4 and 5, between 4 and 5. Yes, um, she would be a kid then, right? Or she'd be at least yeah. very young. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about timeline there. That's a good point. Yeah, so if they did. And, I, I, you know, maybe with EA they want a little bit of continuity there because they want that to still be considered canon. I wouldn't mind if we see a little Iden Versio, like. Not as like a direct cameo, but like you hear maybe somebody talking in the background and you see a young version. Yeah, her of parents her. are alive, you know. Exactly. So it's like for people who know, you get that cameo, but it's not like an overt yeah. thing, right? Um, yeah. I just hope it meets in the middle and it kind of finds that where we have these opportunities of surprises where it's like, oh, I didn't expect to see this person in the game. But then there's these new yeah. interesting characters. And Respawn said that cal and the other characters are going to be used it is canon so they can be used in other property so it'd be interesting oh, to baby. see if there's an episode nine character in this or like the seeds of an episode nine character yeah, or like other tough. stuff um i just thought of a great one jared this is a clone wars uh debuting character 
Cad Bane Cad is Bane. a uh, he's a bounty hunter. Ooh. And he's uh, a <sighs> his race dude. looks like Thrawn's race, but I don't think he's the same race as Thawne. Is it with the C or a K? C A D. Okay. Um. Ooh, yeah, I, I've seen this guy. I've seen this guy's image before. Yeah, Cad Bane is a dope-ass bounty hunter in Clone Wars, and I'd love to see him. He's like Thrawn meets Clint Eastwood. Well, yeah, exactly. What is his race? Does it? Are you able to see that? Uh, let really? me go to Wikipedia real quick. Let's see. His race is... Species Duros. Okay, Chiss is the name of uh, Thrawn's race in the common tongue, of course. Yeah. I wonder what... Have they explained what gives them blue skin? Oh, they can actually... His race can have three different skin colors. They can have yeah, blue I skin, mean, green skin, Star or purple Wars, skin. Who the fuck knows? <laughs> also, shout out to General Syndulla. It'd be awesome to see her voiced by Vanessa Marshall. She's um, from Rebels as well. Uh, captain of the uh, uh, Ghost Squad. So there's there's actually a fair number of his race in the Star Wars universe. I don't know any yeah. of these characters, but they're uh, and and Grigo, Cade Bane or Cad Bane, Bot, Brother Sist, Owen Demal, Akar Duel, Hafner, Jaman, Banis Keeg, Lulo Lampar. That name sounds familiar. I think I've heard somebody talk about that character. Massa, Ramset, Shriv, Shergav, Su <laughs> Sularla, Tug, and Ugordar. Don't know. And then he's just Cad Bane. Yeah, he's a like Cad Bane. Yeah, it's like, oh, he's the he's a character that got some story. Uh, I I see. Um, what about when does Resistance take place? Do you know that newer animated oh, God. series? God, it's so bad, dude. It's during, uh, the new movies. Oh yeah, because uh, Poe Dameron's in it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other characters. Do you think there's a chance we could see K2SO because we've seen that security Imperial droid feature as like a boss fight? And I wonder if there will be a part of the game where you go to fight one of them uh, and then it ends up being K2SO, you know, where you don't end up fighting it. voice comes through, maybe. That'd be interesting. Quite possible. I, oh, I know one cameo I don't want to see, and I'm going to get hell from Star Wars fans for it. Um, I don't want to see C3PO or R2-D2. Okay. At all. I can dig. And it's just one of those things of, like, oversaturation. Like, even if Darth Vader is in this game, I'm cool with it because it's like, we don't... For Star Wars to exist past, like, the main Skywalker saga, like, you need to have series that don't necessarily rely on those characters like we've seen with Clone Wars introducing a bunch of new characters and all these other things. The Mandalorian will be interesting to see if maybe some characters from that make a cameo. Um, Yeah. Because that's around the same timeline, right? Give or take... So, uh, I think Mandalorian is yeah. I think it's between three and four, if I'm not mistaken. Also, <clears throat> if we do end up seeing Vader, I'd actually rather not fight him because yeah, you know how is that a thing um, with this guy who's not even you know a Jedi Knight level, and um, I think it'd be really cool to see it from like kind of a Rogue One type perspective where you just see Darth Vader do some like crazy fucked up shit you know from Cal's perspective he's watching him and just like you just fucking steer as clear as you possibly can and maybe you feel distant enough to where it's like yeah okay maybe Vader wouldn't have sensed him you know so it feels realistic in that way but um, you just kind of like witness him do some shit where you're like I am not on that level you know I would love if it was a type of scene kind of like that where um, Vader's landed on a planet or an outpost or something and you, Cal is basically forced to evacuate on a ship or something, right? Like, he wants to stay to help them, but his master and everyone around him, his confidants, and know, like, no, <laughs> Vader will wreck you. So, like, they yeah. force him away, and as he's leaving, he sees in, like, maybe, like, a, some kind of visual comms. <laughs> Obliterate. The, the events play out, and then it cuts to, like cutscene or CG or whatever where you see Darth Vader just dismantle these people and Cal's yeah. watching him just obliterate everything because mm-hmm. you it doesn't make if, it, if this is supposed to be canon he shouldn't fight Vader and if he does mm-hmm. it's like well 
Vader Vader would either kill him or capture him. There's no way of like Cal being able to like get out scot free. Um, yeah. It's it's tough. I yeah. I hope it's from a distance. It's like not an active engagement with Vader. That's what I hope, anyways. Yeah. Um, I think that's it for this episode. One forty nine point one. The comics follow up in between issue. Mm. Uh, we'll be back with Dom. We're going to be doing episode 150. Going to be going over some stuff from the past 150 episodes. I also have a neat little game I want to play with both Jordan and Dom regarding just controlled interests and what we've done through the podcast and stuff. I think it'll be fun. Uh, a little bit of a competition to see who comes out on top. That'll be cool to see. So, could I get a comic shout out from you, Jared? Uh, what do you mean? Just shout out a comic. Uh, I'll shout out Fair Lady number three. Or So I will say, um... Actually, Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man number six. Okay. That's my favorite comic so... of the year. It might be my favorite comic ever. Whoa. Should I be reading this one? You haven't read it? Oh my god, it's it's really good. Dude, I had to cut down on my spider books. I'm reading uh, Amazing. I'm reading Morales. I'm reading uh, Spider Gwen. It's like I don't. So I don't want to overhype it because that's the worst thing to do. All I'll say is I went in with zero ex- expectations as well, and was really surprised by it. It's at the very least whether or not you end up like really loving it or not. It's an issue that everyone should read in 2019. I'll just put it that way. Okay. It's a must read. Might not be your favorite okay. comic, but I do think it's a must read for everyone who reads comics. Number six. Six just came out. Uh, Friendly Neighborhood. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's the issue. Let me just double check. I know it by the cover, gotcha. but you can go ahead and shout out the comic you were going to shout out while I look it up. So I'll just say Justice League over at DC. Um, it's kind of. It's weird how writers are kind of hopping in and out every now and then on this book. Um, you know, you'll see Scott Snyder do it sometimes, but then uh, I don't necessarily know how you would pronounce his name. James Tinian the Fourth, I think. T Y N I O N. Maybe it's Tinian. Um, but he's he's an awesome writer. Uh, a bit verbose, maybe, but uh, an awesome writer and. Kind of like when I was trying to get into comics, Jared, I was like trying to maybe latch on to a certain writer that I felt was like on the come up that I could kind of watch along the way. And he wrote the Talon book back in uh, DC New 52. And I was like super into the Talons, which are Batman villains. And um, so I checked that out and have kind of followed him from there. Now he's writing Justice League, Justice League Dark. Um, just read Justice League Dark uh, 12 today, so that's good stuff, too. I guess that's two comic shout-outs. It is issue number six, by the way. Introducing okay. Spider-Man. Friendly Light. Neighborhood Spider-Man. Yeah, it's a definite I'm caught up on Amazing, so caught up on all the Spider books. So I guess I could try out a little six issues, you know? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a standalone issue. You don't have to read the other five. Dude. If I'm going to get into it, you know, like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, if it was, like, Dom, I'd say, yeah, just hop in on six, you know. It's the it's a it's a good run. I'm, I am enjoying it, but I didn't want to, like, hey, Jordan, read all six issues. It is a standalone on itself, so if you want to just hop into that. But the story and friendly is pretty good. It's, uh, You're enjoying that? It's by enjoying Tom Taylor, well. who's the guy who did the all-new Wolverine run. For Laura. Which you're a big fan of. Exactly. When they introduce Honey Badger, who no, now goes by... She has a new name. I can't remember it. They recently gave her a new uh, superhero name. I can't yeah, think of I it. I did uh, stop reading that book because I was like waiting for it to be this awesome book that people had talked about. And I was like, oh no, that was all new Wolverine with Tom Taylor. Like, this isn't yeah. that anymore. You know, we're back to X-23, so... That ended, like, I think after, like, 32 issues or 36 issues, and then, yeah, it switched okay. over back to X-23 because Wolverine was coming back and all the comics Marvel stuff. Marvel fresh taunt. Yeah. Um, that's it for this week's podcast, guys. We'll come back next week with episode 150. Hopefully there will be some gaming news going on. It's been a little bit dry post E3. But I guess next week we don't need it because we're doing the 150 celebration. So either way, yeah. Dom will be here, hopefully. Jordan will be back. I'll be back. We're not going to be dry. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.